we are going on a cruise on a new cruise ship. And I do think that this might be the most excited that I've been to go on a cruise since I started this channel. However, I have two very big concerns. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewallcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, I love to do these videos where we chat less formally and I answer some of your questions. And of course, I get to share what my upcoming cruise is going to be. And I always love to hear your feedback. Now, recently I asked viewers, what are some of the questions that you have, whether they be about cruises, personal or business? And you know what? There were a lot of great questions. I'm gonna answer many of them in this video. And there was one question that came up more often than any other. Now I did have to dig a little bit to find the answer to that question, but I am gonna answer it in this video. Now, if you watch my videos regularly, you know what I'm gonna say next. If you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Okay, so first let's start off with some personal questions and then we are going to get into some cruise advice. Number one, are you and your husband ever going to move to Florida? So no, we're not going to be moving to Florida. We are Canadian. We live in the Montreal region of Canada and really we're not going to be moving to the United States. However, what I would love to do is become a snowbird, so to speak. So I would like to eventually spend more time in Florida. We do really love it there. And if I could perhaps spend maybe about four months a year in the future, that definitely is in my plans. Number two, what is my favorite brand of clothing when it comes to cruise wear? Well, I don't have one favorite brand, but I did recently get quite a few different items from Tommy Bahama. So I really like their cruise and resort wear. And of course, I think a lot of people know I get a lot of items from Amazon. Now it does mean sometimes buying things, returning them because they don't really work. So there's a lot of trial and error to find the really good ones. I did find this dress that I'm wearing right now. I absolutely love it. I'm going to wear it hopefully for, I got a fluff in my eyes. I will hopefully wear it for formal or dressy night on my upcoming cruise. Now I will leave the link to this dress link down below in the description of this video, as well as a link to a blog post with all of my favorite cruise dresses. But once I'm on board my cruise, I will definitely show you more of my upcoming cruise outfits, which leads me to the question that was asked the most on my recent post. And it is, where did you get that dress? Now the dress that I'm wearing in this photo is from a store in Rome. It is called Abadicchia. Now you can find this store right near the Spanish steps. It was on sale and when I saw it, I thought, oh, that is gonna look really good on a future Caribbean cruise. Now, by the way, I know some people think, I just can't wear that or I can't wear a sleeveless dress. That is absolutely not true because no matter what our size is, no matter what our age is, I have a philosophy, I just believe it to be true, everybody looks good on a cruise. How many pieces of luggage do I usually bring on a cruise? Now it can vary depending on the length of the cruise, but typically what I do is I bring a 24 or 26 inch checked luggage as well as a carry-on bag. Now I am not trying to win a prize for cruising carry-on only, so that is just not me. And I have a little bit of a weakness for shoes and handbags, so that is the reality. But I do try to pack in a way that is a little bit more organized. And I do try not to overpack as much as I used to. Now, by the way, this video is not sponsored, but my favorite luggage is level eight. I will leave a link down below in the description of this video because I do have a code for 10% off if you are interested. Okay, let's get practical with some cruise advice. Now, this one I think is a really good question that nobody really talks about, and it has to do with embarkation day. If I am traveling with somebody who has a bad back or has difficulty walking, what do I do? Do I have any tips? So yes, I have a little bit of a tip. It is to call the cruise line or your travel agent, let them know, because oftentimes what can happen is this can be noted on your file and you'll have a little bit of assistance when you do get to the embarkation port. Now, if your travel partner is willing to sit in a wheelchair, I think that this is probably the best solution and you will have some assistance at the cruise terminal. You'll be able to use an elevator. It really can take a little while 
at embarkation. So this will help to speed the process along a little bit and to remain comfortable as well. Now, as long as you don't need a wheelchair once you're on the cruise ship, I think that this is the way to go. How much cash should I bring on for any extra tips that I want to give over and above the automatic gratuities? Now, this is something that really is a very personal question. I have some videos about this, so I don't really wanna go into it in detail. However, I would ask everybody if you could leave in the comments below, if you do give an additional amount to your cabin attendants or to waiters, how much do you usually give? Just as a suggestion, please leave that down in the comments below. What do I recommend doing? in Nassau, Bahamas, that is within walking distance of the cruise terminal. So what I recommend is Margaritaville Resort. We've gone there, it takes about, I guess 15 minutes or a little bit less to walk there. It is just adjacent to the Junkanoo Beach. Now the Junkanoo Beach is a free beach, so if you're looking for a free activity, you could do that. In our experience, to be honest, it was a little bit dirty. So I found the resort to be a better option. They did have an area of the beach where you have lounge chairs and you did have the pool and the water slides to use as well. Do I need to bring the local currency if I'm going on a Caribbean or a Mexico cruise? So no, you don't need to bring the local currency and you definitely can if you want to, you'll probably get a better exchange rate in that case. However, if you plan on just spending a few dollars when you're in port, I think it's just more practical to bring US dollars. How bad are obstructed cabins and should I avoid them? Now, if you're booking an obstructed cabin because it is a really good price and it's a better option than having a lower category. So for instance, if instead of an inside cabin, you can get an obstructed balcony cabin, I definitely think that that is a good idea. However, there is going to be some form of an obstruction. So keep in mind, if you wanna have an amazing, expansive ocean view, you're not gonna have that if you are facing a lifeboat. Cruises and cruise lines. Would I consider going back on a carnival cruise? So yes, I would consider going back on a carnival cruise. It's actually in my plans for the next year, not finalized yet, to be honest. The ship that I am thinking of is the Carnival Celebration. I do need your advice if you are somebody who cruises with Carnival. Is the Havana cabin worth it on that type of ship? Please let me know down in the comments below. Why do I hate MSC cruises and would I consider going on an MSC cruise this year? Well, first of all, I don't hate MSC cruises because I've never been on MSC cruises. So I have nothing bad to say about them. Of course, I'm aware that they do get a little bit of mixed reviews, but I do actually have a plan to sail on MSC this year. So do watch out for an upcoming video where I will share the details. What is my current favorite cruise ship? Now, I really like this question because we've done so many cruises and honestly, this does change over the years. So I do have some current favorites. One of them is the Celebrity Ascent. We went on Celebrity Ascent in January of this year. Absolutely love this ship as well as the Beyond. The other ship is Holland America, Rotterdam and Holland America, New Staten Dam. And in contrast to other larger ships, this is really a mid to large ship rather than mega. And I really love so many things about it. The Enchanted Princess. I loved sailing on the Enchanted Princess. I love the Royal class from Princess. And this ship was the most beautiful of the Princess ships that we have been on so far. And Royal Caribbean Oasis of the Seas. Now I know this is not the newest ship, but I do think that the refurbishment that Royal Caribbean did in, I believe it was 2019 or 2020, they did an amazing job. And I just think that the Oasis of the Seas still remains one of the very best ships out there for families, for anybody who loves great entertainment, and really for people of all ages. Now, there are three brand new ships that have come out this year that I am actually pretty excited about. One of them is Icon of the Seas. Now, I did not book this for those early sailings. So hopefully I will be on a little bit later on this year and I will share with you my thoughts. The other one is Carnival Jubilee. Now, even though this ship really does look great, the fact that it is sailing from Galveston, I think probably it's a little bit farther for me. It's a little bit easier for me to get on board the celebration, but please let me know if you've been on what you think. And the ship that I am the most excited about is the Sun Princess, which leads me to the ship that we are going on next. So my upcoming cruise is on Sun Princess. Now it is a Mediterranean cruise. However, it is a little bit different. So I will explain. It is a media trip slash press event. So it is only five days rather than being 10 days, 
but I'm really looking forward to getting on board, seeing this new cruise ship. I've seen a lot of the coverage of the maiden voyage. This ship looks just fantastic, and I absolutely can't wait to sail and to share it with you. Now in those five days, we have some port days and some time on the cruise ship, but I'm sure we're gonna have a really good chance to see all of the different venues, to try out quite a lot of food. So I will be able to share quite a lot of information with you. Now we're gonna be catching the ship mid-cruise. So we're gonna be starting off in Athens and we're going to be ending off in Rome. I cannot wait to spend a little bit more time in Athens, but this leads me to my worry or concern. It is the fact I wasn't able to get a direct flight at this time of the year from where I live. So I do have to take connecting flights and the travel time just to get there is going to be about 15 hours. So that is the longest time that I will be spending flying ever. You know that I do have some flight anxiety. I guess this is an opportunity for me to continue to use some of those strategies. Now beyond that, even though I'm not typically a light packer, I'm really trying to be very intentional for this cruise, knowing I don't have many days to plan for, and I would like to try to reduce the amount of luggage that I bring, especially since I am doing this connecting flight. So please let me know any practical tips that you have. Please let me know down in the comments below. Okay, so let's get back to some more personal questions and some travel tips. How do I do the long drive from Montreal to Florida. Now this is approximately a 24 hour drive and I did have people ask, what are some of my tips for road tripping to the cruise protocol? So first of all, if you are traveling a distance, let's say from Ontario, Canada, from Quebec, so Montreal, or even from New York, something that we do is we typically do break up the drive into two days. So the drive is about 24 hours. What we do is we try to actually do about 14 to even 16 hours the first day, so a longer day of driving that first day, and then we stop about midway in North Carolina. We get a hotel that's just off the 95. And then the next day we wake up early, we start driving by about 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m. And then we get to Florida around hopefully by 6 p.m. or so most of the time. And that makes it a pretty manageable drive. At the same time, we are two drivers. So my husband drives a lot, but I'll drive as well. We bring a lot of food and snacks in the car. My absolute favorites are M&Ms, especially the peanut M&Ms and Doritos and some nibs. Somehow bringing those road trip snacks really do help. Now, I also download some podcasts that we listen to. And when our kids were younger, they would just watch things on their iPad. Now, I definitely do suggest to still head in at least a couple of days before. And for people that are Canadian, why not take advantage of some of the shopping in Florida, pick up a few things that you can't get at home, including boning, which is not sold in Canada, but really is very effective for preventing seasickness. Now we park at the cruise port. I don't find this difficult at all. However, we do always go early because we find that that parking can get filled up. So it can feel a little bit hectic if we aren't there early and we don't have that extra time. But otherwise, something very convenient is that you could park at some hotels that offer a park and cruise package and a shuttle service to the port. Now I had a question and this one comes up a lot. It is how do I maximize the amount of time that I can go on cruises as well as money because I'd like to cruise and travel as much as you. So just to let you know, or let people know who don't know, this is a business. So I am not saying that people should cruise several times a year, especially if you're not retired. I just don't think that it is realistic for most people unless you really live within the port area. However, if you wanna cruise more often, something that you can do is try to fit in cruising around the holidays that you already have, those paid days off. And this way you don't have to take those extra days at your expense. Now, beyond that, to save money, look for dates that are a little bit cheaper to sail. Look for ships that are a little bit less expensive because they're perhaps just a little bit older or maybe off season. And look for cabins that are less expensive as well. Now, early on when I started my blog and this channel, what we did, we were already cruising twice a year for a few years, but we tried to cruise a little bit more often, so like three times a year. So the money that we made from our business, we put back in and that pretty much 
paid for any of our travels. Now our business really is sustainable. My husband, my son, and myself all work within it. So when we're on board, we're actually creating a lot of content and that is what we do. So when we're planning a lot of our cruises, we're really thinking about the content, about what we can do with it on our channel and on our website or on social media. So that is how I plan the cruises and I do invest a certain amount of money from our business. I do invest that into the cruises we do. Now for people that are already content creators, I had a really good question and it was about how do I manage to create content while I'm on a cruise and still enjoy the cruise? How do I manage that? Well, basically we do actually have balance. It's gotten a lot better, but the way we do that is we're really intentional about planning the content so we know what is the main thing that we want to do when we're on that cruise maybe a main video idea or main social media that we want to have and then we'll do things like wake up early to film some of the areas around the cruise ship before there are a lot of people on board or if i am going to be filming a video in my cabin then i know i already have that planned the night before so i could film that nice and early ideally now we also write articles about cruises so we may take notes on our phone during the cruise about some of the different things or i might even already have a list of questions that i want to find out that on the cruise or pictures that i want to take so i will already have a list of sort of things that I want to do and hopefully I can accomplish most of that. Now during the day if things happen spontaneously I definitely do take my phone out so does my husband so does my son and we'll film those things as we go as well but because we don't vlog we are able to get several hours every single day that we could still relax and enjoy. What is my advice to somebody who wants to start their own channel? So beyond just start, because that is really important and start with your iPhone, that is absolutely fine. But I have a really practical piece of advice. Look for an area that is not yet that well covered and it is okay to have a niche. So for instance, it's great to be a solo cruiser or a solo traveler and to really talk to that audience who's very interested or talk about one cruise line in particular. I mentioned this because it is a really good way to get started and it is a little bit easier to break through some of the noise because there are so many channels out there and it is a way for you to provide some fresh information from a unique perspective. Now, by the way, for everybody who's asked about the different cruise outfits that I have bought for my upcoming cruise and by the way, for a cruise that I have coming up, after that, I've bought quite a bit of stuff on Amazon. I will have an upcoming video about sort of an Amazon haul or something like that, but I'll include many of the dresses that I have bought, like the actual favorites. I'm gonna include them in a blog post and that will be linked down below in the description of this video. Now, please let me know, are you going to be going on Sun Princess either this year or even in 2025? Please let me know down in the comments below and leave me your questions so that I can answer them once we are on board. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.